All right, 7.3, applications of the normal distribution. You can use the normal distribution to model the, the frequency and probability density distributions of continuous random variables. The normal distribution has a central peak and is symmetric about the mean. So here's our mean here. And what we can determine is that this is one standard deviation to the left. This is one standard deviation to the right. And what we know is that from the mean and the median, they are equal to each other in a normal distribution. And what else we know is that one standard deviation on either side of the mean means that it will cover roughly 68% of the data, given that we have a normal distribution. Now, two standard deviations away means that we will cover roughly 95% of the data. In other words, we have a there's a 95% probability of something occurring within two standard deviations of the normal distribution. Three standard deviations, we're essentially, folks, getting to the point where we cover 99.7% of the data. <clears throat> That is, the probability of the data occurring within three standard deviations of the mean is 99.7%. Let's look at an example that kind of uses this theory to be able to answer the question. A sample of male patients at a hospital showed a mean systolic blood pressure of 124.7 mmHg with a standard deviation of 14.5. Using the <coughs> Z-score table, that's on page 480 to 481, determine the probability that a measurement from a large sample lies within three standard deviations of the mean. So, what we need to do is prove this is true. To do that, we need to know <coughs> that our Z-scores between negative 3 and 3 will result in 99.7% of the data. Well, if we look at our table, we have a table very close to 3, which is 2.99. <coughs> and then we also have a probability of a z-score being less, greater than negative 2.99. So, again, the z what we have, to be able to calculate this, we need to subtract the two z-score probabilities, the probability of it being 2.99 and then minus the probability of it being less than negative 2.99. Why are we doing that? So I'm going to just show you, looking at a graph, if we have 2.99, let's say from here, negative 2.99 and positive 2.99, and we want to cover everything, what we have to do is we're 2.99 using the z-score probability, that will cover everything here, including all of this piece here. In order to subtract this piece out, we have to subtract the probability of the z-score being less than negative 2.99, which essentially will rub out that last little piece there so that we would have this piece that would be not needed, and we would have not the greater part so only the part that's in between those two values and to see that it covers 99.7% of the data. We're proving it here, folks. All right, so, so here we go. Probability of z-score being less than or equal to 2.99 is 0 0.9986. Probability minus the probability of z-score being less than negative 2.99 is 0 0.0014. That is, when I subtract these two, I'm going to get a value of 0 0.9972. So again, that covers roughly 99.7% of our data, which is essentially what we're proving. So determine the probability of a measurement from a large sample that lies within three standard deviations of the mean. It should be 99.7, and we've proven it here, folks. All right, well, that's the end of the video. That's all we really need to do in this case. Uh, the homework here really does apply to this understanding. Have a numerical day, folks.